Hello everyone. So we've all heard about different kinds of labs like a physics lab, a computer lab, a chemistry lab. Now what's coming up is live nature lab and it's becoming popular across the world. But what is all about it? Let's hear it from the brain behind the Professor Miyawaki Memorial Live Nature Lab. Hello, Mr. Hari. So what is this Live Nature Lab? See, as everybody knows, Nature Lab is a concept where we have, we can explore nature. There will be dry leaves, uh, specimens of uh, animals, insects and all those things. But this is a live place where you can see them actually moving around with no control. I mean, if you go to a zoo, you can see the animals in a cage or something. But here it is naturally breeding, naturally living, naturally going around and uh, naturally getting killed by others, prey predator, all those things are the, here. So to impart that knowledge of nature, we have set up this nature lab which is very much like an urban forest. So here what we have done is we have added so many species of trees and naturally the insects came there. So insects, uh, plants and also the soil. All these things together make the live nature lab. So we thought uh, we can have a prototype of this in schools. For that we made a small model of around 1000 square feet which can be put in a school. So this is the concept of live nature lab. Live nature lab. So what is unique about this particular nature lab that you have created here in Trivandrum? Yeah, uh, the speciality of this nature lab is originally you, you, you should have seen this place some 10-15 years back. Because as you can see there is a quarry on the other side of this thing. This is also rock. This was also supposed to be used for mining. I came to this place because this was the cheapest land available in Trivandrum. It's only some 10 kilometers from the heart of Trivandrum city, 12 kilometers or something. So it's easily accessible for me. I can come on a scooter every day here. And I thought I will uh, buy this land and uh, uh, I'll plant some trees here. Of course, I could, uh, uh, I was able to buy this land. But then uh, while started planting, I found that there is no water here. Even I had a feeling that there would be no, there, there would be no water in the beginning itself. But I never thought that it would be this worse. The groundwater level here is almost 350 feet below the ground level. That is because I think uh, there are so many quarries working around in and around this area. And because of the explosions at the quarry, the rock under the soil will move a little bit. There will be gaps and the aquifers will uh, try out. I mean, the water will go down. So there is no water up to 350 feet. I don't know whether it is there beneath that depth because for that you need another machine to measure those things. So I have measured up to 350 and there is no water. So how to plan things there? But all these happen only later. In the first 10 years, I did not uh, think of this uh, science of it think of the science of it and what I did is I was just planting trees here. Every year I planted some 500 trees, 500 saplings and uh, 50 of them survived. So I thought after 10 years there will be 500. When I looked at it after 10 years, then only it was only 50. Because every 2 or 3 years in the well, there will be a trout. And in that trout, every, everything will try out. So this was happening continuously and I was thinking of what to be done. And then I heard of Miyawaki model of forestation. Uh, one of my friends, Bobby Mohan, and uh, one of my nephew, Krishna Prasad, they sent me the links of a TED Talk by Shubhendu Sharma. For, it, it lied in my inbox for almost one month because I was not very serious about it. Then both of them uh, orally told me that uh, this is something very important. It is a, it's creating a forest in a small area. So I went to that and I got the basic idea. I bought the book of Professor Miyawaki and learned about it from uh, web and all. In those days, there were very little sources on web because this is basically the information on Miyawaki forest is mostly in Japanese, I think. So there was there were no material at that time. It was in 2015 or 16. So I tried to get water information and I planted this forest. This is the first forest. Now it is 60 feet high, many of the plants there. And that was done in 2018 January. That means almost six years back. So I found it a success and uh, then I went to meet Professor Miyawaki and I continued this endeavor. That is how you started, you started about this. So you are saying this was a barren land that you have converted into a, a, yeah, so a live forest model basically. So uh, I mean as you know right, this term, the live nature lab is just coming up now and uh, is this a fad like is it? It's just going to be at a micro level uh, experiment or do you think it will become a popular thing and more and more people will start adapting it. You would see schools having na nature labs. Where do you see this going? Uh, I see two, three opportunities in this because live nature lab is a concept that is going to grow in the coming years. 
because it is a necessity i mean it's a it's a demand of the time uh, say for example uh, two things are there one is that every one of us is uh, suffering from climate change and uh, its impact it is slowly happening in different parts for example yesterday there was a big sandstorm in bombay with rain uh, if we t- take last week's paper there will be something else somewhere else so it has been continuously happening for all these yeah. days so everybody is concerned about it even corporates are concerned about it how to bring down the global warming and all those things are happening but they don't have places to experiment this or uh, teach the concept to the younger generation so this will happen because uh, those who are working on this thing need a model for uh, infusing this information in children and uh, the best thing is having a small place in every school, every school. so now uncd united nations convention on combating desertification they have taken this up and they are going to start this in 1 million schools and the first conference is the conference will be held in uh, born in june so it is happening from that place second thing is the climate industry i mean the climate change and related issues and all it is becoming a trillion dollar industry yeah. so when a new industry comes even um, uh, plastic uh, recycling all those sustainable things are part of it and uh, not just planting trees so many things are there so many components are there yeah, yeah. So that means there will be a lot of opportunities, a lot of courses, a lot of uh, professionals are required in that area. So the basic training for them can be started in this live nature lab. lab. And uh, we cannot go to forest and learn things like that. One is uh, the human animal conflict is very much there in many areas where forest is uh, shrinking down. Correct. And also the accessibility. Yeah, accessibility and uh, the risk of it. Uh, People don't want to take the risk. So nature lab is a safe place because only those animals which we allow to come, I mean uh, these are mostly the, uh, uh, we can't say that uh, they are completely this thing uh, free of uh, this any danger to it. But there is no uh, wild animals there in the nature labs, only those It's the most secure environment. Yeah, it's a secure environment and in school and all it will be only in 1000 uh, square feet, that is 100 square meter, it is just like a classroom. Only thing is that you have a live model and the classroom is in the middle of that live environment. The problem now is to convince the school authorities that this is the next requirement for their schools. It will take some time. So I think uh, that is the only delay in uh, implementing this concept. But otherwise you would see in the future definitely this is going to become definitely. a popular every, every school concept. needs it. Yeah, every school needs it. Because you cannot see normally all these insects come out in the morning. Correct. And butterflies and all those things. Because we, we cannot see these butterflies and birds and all uh, in these flats and all. So, there can be a nature lab uh, in the school compound and you can go there in the morning or evening or whatever time you are in the school and you can see what is happening there and teacher can guide them. They can give them assi- assignments, draw the picture of the insect or uh, take a photograph of this insect or uh, maybe can have a video conference with a school in uh, Kerala and a school in Himachal Pradesh on the diversity of the uh, plants there, uh, flora and fauna. So, there are a lot of opportunities, yeah, lot of opportunities are there. which you can, which can come up. Which we are we can, done, we can, it can be done. It can be done. So, who is exactly the target audience? When I say target audience, like um, with this nature lab that you have started now, right? So, who are you targeting or who, who are you opening it out to? Um, actually, there are three type of target audience for this. One is the general public. They need awareness because they are the decision makers. Ultimately, in a democracy, people are the yeah. decision makers. So, they must have some basic idea. So, uh, especially these LSG panchayat members and all, they can also come and see what is happening and they can understand what is the uh, problem there. But our prime target is the school children. School children. So, they have to start learning environment uh, with a passion. Uh, just uh, maybe a boring textbook cannot infuse that uh, interest in them. This is more a practical can, yeah, experience. This is a practical experience and they will also understand thing, what is happening. Why is, uh, so it's a hands-on experience for them. Second is the corporate professionals. We are thinking of a short-term course for them because uh, this environmentally sustainable governance is the new term, ESG. Every corporate should have a division for that. They have heard the, of it. Yeah, yeah. Because they are, the corporates are the people who are uh, actively sabotaging or uh, subverting or even nurturing the environment in different ways. Because uh, as part of some business, you have to dig the nature. Correct. Maybe as part of something, you have to bring up plants and other things or uh, without disturbing the nature. So, so many things are there. So, if there is a division within the corporates itself, focusing on this thing or uh, while using the CSR fund or a corporate environment responsibility fund, they will be more cautious of the projects being coming. And the Correct, the impact they create yeah. on the environment. 
So the, every, I think every corporate professional should have an idea of what is going to happen because we don't have much time in hand. Correct, very true. Because global warming is coming very fast. Yeah, it's a very, to, it's a yeah, pressing yeah, issue, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, what is the cost involved in setting up a nature lab, if at all we need to set, I mean, if at all somebody is looking at setting up a nature lab? Yeah, this is actually what we have done here is, this is a vast area, almost two and a half acre, which is around say 10,000 square meet, meter. And we cannot put such a big lab anywhere. And here also we did it in parts. We did in uh, some small forest, small pa forest patches in different areas. Then the squirrels and bats and all those things came. In the 10 years time, they just spread it around. But uh, if you are t talking about a school or something, it depends on the availability of space there. You can create it in just uh, 100 square feet or 200 square feet or uh, 400 square feet. Maybe a classroom needs around 150, 200 square feet of land and around that maybe another 400 can be the minimum. But the ideal size of a forest will be 1000 square feet. According to Professor Miyawaki, an urban forest, for the ideal uh, land allotment or the space required for a an urban forest is around uh, 1000 square feet, which is 100 square meter, almost. That, that That's great, that's amazing. So uh, now, you know, just a few minutes ago, you were saying that, you know, uh, like for example, a school in Himachal Pradesh could video call or a, go, get on a video conferencing with a school in Kerala or some other place and discuss about, you know, their biodiversity, right? So in an uh, era of digital today, uh, how do you think nature lab would make a difference or why do you think it's important that you know you have a live nature lab? See, we see so many things in our television, okay. We have exclusive channels for nature and all. First of all, we don't uh, spend much time in it. Second thing is we are also not getting it in our way. Maybe we are seeing some wild animals chasing these things or a uh, landslide or some accidents or things like that. Uh, for example, I know that uh, snow, there is a there is a winter in North India where everything is being covered by snow and all. I saw it for the first time in the film Roja. And then I came to know that Roja was not shot in Kashmir, it was shot in Himachal Pradesh. Then only I realized that the apple trees of Himachal Pradesh will also look like the apple trees of Kashmir in the uh, winter season. And I saw, I visited Shimla only when I was uh, 45 or 50 because I was not interested in that type of uh, holiday journeys and all. But it was not during the winter. I could, I could get some idea of the terrain and the structure and all there. For students, we are reading all these things in, in text. textbooks. Yeah, and they are getting see. no idea of it. Yeah, there's the, no practical This will be covered by correct, the, correct, the apple true. will be there, or the maize will be here, yeah. or in Haryana, the uh, this uh, haystack will be burnt, and uh, Delhi there will be smog. All these are information we are getting, but we don't know practically what is the problem, how it is happening. But if some students here communicating with the students on the other side, so they will also uh, start thinking more about it in the problems in their surroundings when somebody asks about it. When I ask a boy today uh, about the uh, sandstorm in Bombay, definitely he will try to understand more about it and share some information and all. So this is the age of communication. We are uh, sending so many trolls between us, among us. Yeah. Rather than that, we can share information. Use it for a little more uh, useful, share information yeah, which is going to be useful uh, for us useful and, and where we can create an impact, human right? Race. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Very nice. So, uh, by when would this nature lab be open to public? Is it already open to public, or how does one reach out to you? It is formally opened, but now we have to do some more things. We have uh, placed some uh, 75 billboards here. We need another 45 because uh, the people who come here, it's in English and Malayalam, so they can read it and understand. But our idea is to make short films on that and later with QR uh, code scan and all to see this in different languages because artificial intelligence is there. So translating videos to one language from uh, other is not a big issue now. But all those things will take time and money. So I think it will be completed in one year's time, but still there is a lot of things to study here even right now and we are starting our courses now because uh, we, we have some very good scientists here who work with the prestigious institutes, research institutes and all. So they have extended their cooperation. With them we can start the course right now and probably we can uh, uh, get the uh, interest of these corporates and uh, students. We are also giving a certification. We are discussing with the one central government agency and also with the UN, one UN agency for giving these certificates to those who successfully complete the Complete the course. Program, which means they have to stay here, work with uh, their uh, hands. Uh, it's a hands-on training. And also they have to undergo an online 
examination which is not very tough but they should we, we want to ensure that they have already internalized the basic knowledge. information at least then only we can give a certificate and that certificate means it has some value yeah. and especially for those students who are uh, trying to seek admission abroad. abroad so this community work and voluntary work and environmental awareness all those things have some importance in that type of courses ah, yeah that will get some yeah. grace mark or something for their admission so that's also our concern so uh, it was lovely talking to you and you know the, you have shared some valuable insights today and you have a very uh, you know noble vision i would say right to create more impact and 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 create a better future for the next generation i wish you all the very best and thank you thank you thank you for uh, your time uh, i was able to explain these things because uh, you asked the proper questions yeah. so i am very much grateful to you thank, thank you thank you